Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Whitfield welcoming you to this weekly broadcast of Victory Assured Ministries. We're going to go right into the word of the Lord momentarily. We're going to be looking at Psalms, the 56th chapter and verse 3. We're going to be talking about a subject that many of us struggle with in Christianity, but we really don't share with others. But we're going to go right into the word of the Lord after we pray, and we're going to discuss being afraid, but still yet trusting in the Lord God. Join us and be blessed by the word of the Lord unto you. Praise the Lord and welcome back. Let us pray and we'll go right into the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from whom all blessings flow. God, we pray now as we go into your word, open up our understanding and cause us to hear and see the things that you would have us to hear and see the things that you would have us to see in your word. God, by the spirit of the living God, see in your anointing, God, that makes teaching and preaching profitable to all. And God, we will give your name, the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' great and mighty name we pray, amen and amen. As we mentioned earlier, we're going to be looking at Psalms 56, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 4, but our primary, primary focal point will be coming from the third verse of this particular chapter. So let us read those four verses, and then we'll go right into what the Lord has for us. For today. Psalms 56, verse 1 down to verse 4, and again, our primary focal point will be coming from verse 3. It says, Be merciful unto me, O God. For man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. My enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me. O thou most high, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me and again for emphasis verse three what time i am afraid i will trust in thee we see here that david has been taken by the philistines in gath which is very clear in verse one david is now in a situation where he is in the hands of his enemies these are men forces that he has fought against successfully let me make it clear. David has defeated their champion, Goliath. David has even killed over a hundred Philistines in order to bring foreskins to King Saul so that he could wed his daughter. David has also gone out on many military campaigns against the Philistines and has come back with a great slaughter. As a matter of fact, in scripture, there's a story that speaks of David, of King Saul killing his thousands and David his tens of thousands. The women of Israel come out and sing as they greet King Saul back and David. So David is a mighty warrior, a mighty conqueror against the natural foe of Israel during this time period, the Philistines. So David has a reputation as a man of war, who has been successful in his military plights. He has done a favor unto Israel by helping to eliminate a threat, a continuous threat to their nation, to their peace, to their shores, to their borders. He has removed fear from Israel of their natural enemies by de constantly defeating them. He has proven to be a wise and worthy servant of King Saul to the very point that he is now praised and honored even to the point that Saul even becomes jealous of David because of his military success and the people being with David and also the anointing of God that is on David's life. David is now in the hands of the Philistines. He is trying to make them his allies because he is running for his life from the very king who he served. 
who he has been serving rather faithfully, wisely, prudently, how he has gone out and fought and put his own life in his own hands for the sake of the kingdom of Israel, which he will soon in the future become king over. David is now running from the very man that he has helped to build his kingdom. And now David is in the hands of the Philistines. Just imagine, being a successful warrior, having multiple success, gaining a reputation that God is for you and with you, and God has proven unto you over and over again that his hand is upon your life. The anointing of God is upon your life. And now you are put to flight because of someone's jealousy someone's anger, someone's murderous spirit, and because an evil spirit from the Lord has been placed upon the individual who is leading you, who now is jealous of you, and know that the hand of the Lord is upon you, and know that the anointing of God is upon you. And now you are at the point where even that king's son aligns with you, gives you the instruction and gives you words that his father is against you and give you wise instructions to flee for your life. David has nowhere to go. He is a, literally a man without a country, anointed with God on his side, fleeing for his life and unable to live amongst his own people who he has defended now David has few choices as to where he can go. David now goes to the Philistines. Here are the men who he has fought against, defeated, killed their champion. And now he is seeking political asylum within the midst of their borders. They receive him, but they don't receive him warmly. David is experiencing what I like to call a radical change in leadership and governance that is over his life. Some of you are experiencing radical changes in your life right now. Some of you are going through things that you thought you would never go through again. The season has shifted in your life and now you find yourself instead of being in peace you're finding yourself embroiled in battle in warfare and you have no choice but to flee in this particular situation you may not have fled physically but emotionally spiritually and psychologically you have fled. You have gone into one of the basic states of either fight or flight. And you're now in the flight because you're losing strength. You're losing the support that you once experienced and enjoyed from the leadership that you're under. Not necessarily the pastorate, not necessarily the ministers, not even necessarily the people of God. But sometimes God places us in a place and circumstances that we are non-supported seemingly. And we feel as though that the presence of the Lord isn't with us. And it has caused us to be in a mindset that we are alone in this particular plot. We feel as though we are now under the control of the enemy. We feel as though we're living within the borders of the enemy of our natural soul. We are not experiencing peace in the inward man. Although the Bible says that thou will keep in perfect peace all thou, those who minds have stayed upon me. We tried to keep our minds stayed upon the Lord. We even tried to find other things to pacify, to even help to lift us out of the state that we're in. 
Multiple times, David says throughout the psalm, Why art thou disquieted within me, O my soul? But to trust in the Lord. Here in verse 3 in Psalms 51, we see that David says these words. At what time I am afraid, I will trust in the Lord. Let's break that down in two digestible pieces of scripture. We're going to break it down by verse, the first part of that verse, at what time I am afraid. And the second part of that verse, I will trust in the Lord. Just the other day, I was speaking with someone and I was sharing with them that there are times in ministry that we as pastors, apostles, preachers, teachers, evangelists, bishops, we're not truly honest with the people of God. We tell the people of God quite frequently to trust in the Lord God Almighty. We trust in the Lord God Almighty, yes, to a certain degree, but allow something to come into our lives that rock us at our very core. And the message that we have thrown into the faces of others and taught others to trust in the Lord, even to the very point that we have rebuked people for their lack of trust in the Lord. We have rebuked people endlessly that if you don't trust in the Lord, you don't have faith. Those statements are extremely powerful on multiple levels. They are also hypocritical in nature as well. Let me explain why it's hypocritical. Because we don't share with the people often in full disclosure and full transparency where we are as the men and women of God, with there are situations that come into our lives that even causes us to question our belief, our faith, our trust, our prayer lives, the fact that we have been called and anointed by God to stand before his people and to declare the word of the Lord. Let me tell you, when you are going through something that is devastating in nature, mentally and emotionally, it will wear you out psychologically, especially when the situation begins to intensify. And although you may pray and you may worship and you may recall the word of the Lord, there are times where God will purposely allow the heat of the situation to increase to the very point that you will not feel the presence of the Lord. The word of the Lord that you try to call to mind and preach will not have its relieving impact or effect on your life. You will feel as though your prayers are not even ascending unto heaven, but they're going nowhere. You will fill the room, fill with your prayers as though God himself has not heard them. He's not entertaining them. They have not been released. And what you cannot see behind the scene is that God is putting your faith to the test. Although he slay me, I will yet trust him. At what time I am afraid? Let's talk about being afraid. Because we often share the word of the Lord that says that he who feareth is not made perfect in love. 
But let's talk about the realities of life. Can we just talk for a moment? Can we just be real with one another? Can we just put aside our religiosity and our holiness and our deepness for just a second so that we can really talk heart to heart and face to face? That fear comes upon all of us from time to time. And there are times that we are so afraid that we don't want our brothers or our sisters or our fellow ministers or even our congregants to see how fearful we really are. We get in our cars, we go to our homes, we get in our private closet, in our bathrooms, in our bedrooms, in our offices, and other surroundings where we are alone. And the communication of what we really feel begins to flow out of our spirit. The tears proceed forth from our eyes. And the words of weakness opposed to strength begin to proceed out of our mouths. David was in a situation where he was grossly outnumbered by his enemies. David did not know what to expect. Fear is the unexpectancy of not knowing what's going to transpire next with one's life. They don't know if they're going to be defeated, destroyed, malicious, maliciously abused. David also says in this very same chapter that they take his words daily and they twist them. David was at the very point that he was surrounded by an enemy that was not only looking to destroy him physically, emotionally, his reputation, but to twist his words. When he spoke well of something, they took his words back and said that he spoke evil of something. How many times has the enemy taken your good intentional words and twisted them to mean something else? Let me tell you, when you are in the throes of a battle, watch your wording. Be sparing with your words. Be careful of who you say what to? To add to the measure of fear is the fact that David is finding out more and more on a daily basis that his enemies are opposing him to the point that their plot is to ultimately destroy him. <coughs> David understood something very serious here. He understood that any second his worry, his fear, his concern would be made into reality. He says, what time? David understood the element of the time element that he was in. All of you listening, there is a time element that the enemy is setting you up for. That time is not predicated upon the time of the clock. It's not based upon the time of day, based upon the sun, the moon, or the stars. This is a predetermined time that the enemy has purposed that he will launch an attack against you. And his purpose is to be successful. David understood that time, in this case, wasn't and isn't on his side, he was perfectly, rightfully afraid. There are times that we are rightfully afraid, 
And we do not want to mention to the people of God, definitely, but even to our own peers in ministry, that we are afraid. Over the past several weeks, I've been counseling multiple people, speaking to them. And one of the things that really stood out in every single conversation was one main rudimentary element, fear. They were extremely and deeply and rightfully afraid of the uncertainty that they were facing on a daily basis. Some of them didn't know how to move to action to get through it. They were gripped by this fear. And even over the past couple of days and weeks, I found myself struggling with that very thing. And when I thought about it, I began to pray intensely, asking God, why is all of this going on? Understand, when you are anointed and appointed by God for a season and for purpose, you, the anointed vessel of God, will be pursued with a vengeance. The devil wants to discombobulate you to the very point that you lose strength, that you lose momentum, that you lose the anointing of God, you lose your fervency for prayer, you lose your desire for ministry, you lose the ability to help people, and now you're incapacitated and rendered useless. David came up with a remedy for his fear. David said, at what time I am afraid, I will trust in the Lord. Now, here's the part that is really critical that I even found out about myself. I had a measure of trust in the Lord that I thought I had matured to, but God also brought to mind a prayer that I had prayed last year towards the latter part of the year, that now he was bringing the situation and the prayer request to pass. Be extremely careful what you pray for and understand what you're praying for and come to the realization of what will transpire in the future as a result of your prayer. Too often we pray in full ignorance of what we're asking for. We're like the mom and the sons of Zebedee who asked Jesus, can this one sit on your right-hand side and can this one sit on the left? But are they worthy of the death that I can die, that I will die? No, they didn't understand it, but yet they were adamant about sitting on those in those positions. But Jesus let them know that you will suffer things because of your request. There are times that we pray unto the Lord God Almighty and don't fully realize what we're asking the Lord for. And when the fulfillment of the prayer is realized, oftentimes we don't even realize that we're living in the fulfillment of the prayer that we pray until we're long in the midst of the circumstances and we realize why we're in it. I asked God at the latter part of last year to build trust in me for him, regardless of how dark or how bleak the situation may be. And now I'm living, <laughs> hallelujah, Jesus, in the reality of that prayer request. And let me tell you, being in the midst of the reality of that prayer request does not feel good. 
the heat has been turned up. I have become afraid of the situation that I was in. And I confess that openly before the Lord over a period of weeks. And I came to the realization that my trust in the Lord needs help from him. Full disclosure, full transparency. I was not as strong in the Lord and trusting him as I initially thought I was. God had to prove to me God had to prove to me, son, you asked me for something. I'm going to show where you're lacking so that now you can pray that you can trust me on a level and to the point and to the measure and the degree where you have never been before. Years ago, there was a show called Star Trek. And they said they were boldly going where no man had ever gone before. Listen, have you gone so far in your trust that you've gone to a place that only few have gone to before? Have you functioned and operated and trust in God? To the very point that when you're surrounded by your enemies, when you're surrounded by uncertainties, when you're being pursued by a king who once was anointed, who now has an evil spirit upon him, and now you're in the midst of the enemies that you have defeated, and you feel the pressure of the pressure cooker. Can you go somewhere in your faith, in your trust, in your belief in God, and in your knowledge of the holy, that you have never stepped into before. God is sending this message because the same thing that he wants to do with those who have been counseling and the same thing that he wants to do in my spirit is the same thing he wants to do in your spirit. God wants to stretch you. like you've never been stretched before. Hallelujah to the living God. I hear in my spirit right now, God is saying, empty yourself of your false trust. And by his spirit of the living God, I see a vessel in heaven being tilted over into the lives of the vessels of God. I see faith. I see trust. I see hope. I see sustainability being poured into vessels who will confess their shortcomings before the Lord and will empty themselves out in prayer before God and will cry out before him of their lack. I see the spirit of the Lord God in an open vision right now, pouring faith without measure, trust unlimited, and hope beyond belief into every single vessel that will cry out right now, before the living God, Lord, I need you in my life. We can no longer exist. Yeah.